Hello there everybody and welcome back to another Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes video and yes today we're doing something a little bit different. We're doing a little bit of a tier list here, right? We're doing a tier list of every single light speed bundle. We've been talking about light speed bundles quite a bit on the channel in the past and right now especially because we have a brand new light speed bundle that just came out, the Jedi Allies light speed bundle. So we're going to go ahead, put them all in a tier list, rank them worst to best. And in the comment section, I would love to hear what your ranking of these lightspeed bundles is. Now, first of all, we need to get a few things out of the way. One, this is a subjective opinion. Sure, there's a little bit of objectivity to it, but when you get into the nitty gritty, there's subjectivity to it, right? You can have a different list for me, and I would love to hear your list. But let's not attack each other. Let's be civil about it, all right? I think that's a fair thing to ask. Um, number two, these are all obviously S-tier deals. In the game, it does not get better than this, right? You can't get better than these lightspeed bundles when it comes to value in the game. So if we want to just be lame and you have no video to watch, everything's an S tier. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day. But we're not going to do that. We're just going to put, we're going to rank them among each other, not against all of the other value in the game. Because again, everything would just be S tier and there's no point in watching this video then. So Hopefully you guys do understand. Last thing is that I did a little bit of research before this video, but if I forget something in the middle of the recording, don't yell at me uh, because there's a few of these packs that have overlapping things. So uh, if I forget what thing goes where, my apologies, but I'm gonna do my very best to obviously keep everything in line for you guys. So without any further ado, let's drop a like and subscribe. If you wanna stay, stay up to date with more content just like this and you know, you like seeing me suffer in your feed more often because I, I tend to suffer a lot on this channel. So if you wanna see me suffer, drop a like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Anyways, let's get into this. So first of all, we're gonna start with the Starkiller Lightspeed Bundle. Now the Starkiller Lightspeed Bundle, that gives you obviously all of the Starkiller requirements and immediately basically gives you Starkiller. I mean, this is basically exactly what you want from a Lightspeed Bundle. It gives you basically everything you need for an amazing character. Uh, all you really need to do this event is some decent mods. And then you have the event. You have the event done. You have Starkiller on your roster. It is expensive, yes, but for what you get out of it, it's amazing. Like, I know $50 is expensive, and I'm sure that'll be something that we need to take into consideration when we rank this, for sure. But for the $50 price point, that is still cheaper than buying the Chirotech for just like one of those characters. Because all of those characters are very Chirotech intensive characters. So $50 is absolutely, again, worth this. It's a lightspeed bundle. So of course, these are going to be worth it, right? That, I mean, that's what the whole deal is. But you don't have to do any other work besides it. It's, it gives you an amazing character. It's short, sweet, simple, to the point. Amazing value for what you get. Love the Starkiller Ice Bundle. Next up, we have the BB-8 Bundle. And the BB-8 Bundle is one of those early on Lightspeed Bundles. Now, you can you can probably tell I put these in order of release. So, uh, the BB-8 Lightspeed Bundle is one of those early bundles where it was just like, I can't believe that CG actually officially released this bundle because it's just so good. Uh, the BB-8 Bundle basically gives you every First Order character in the game at Relic 5. I'm going... I I mean, I hate to be that guy, but we're going to put it here. You know what? Actually, I'm going to put the Starkiller Lightspeed Bundle in A tier. Everything I said still applies, but I think the BB-8 Bundle did it better. All of the characters in the Starkiller Bundle are amazing, and they're Chirotech intensive and all that, yes. But you get like 10, 12 characters in the BB-8 Bundle at Relic 5. And in the Starkiller Bundle, you get 4, right? 4, I'm pretty sure? Yeah. So, now there's a little bit of a difference there, and I understand that. I just think, you, obviously, you get a lot more with the BB-8 bundle. So, I mean, I still agree with everything I said about the Starkiller bundle, but then when you start comparing it to some of the other bundles, maybe it drops down. We're going to be moving things around during this list as we talk about it. So, uh, I mean, that's kind of where I sit at it. I, I, I think the BB-8 bundle is amazing. Uh, it's basically the Starkiller bundle here, or not Star, sorry, SLKR bundle, but just a little bit different, right? So yeah, there we go. Uh, next up, we have the Radis bundle. Now the Radis bundle is really, really, really good for a few different reasons, right? It gives you a lot of really great ships, 
the pilots are relicked up as well. But also, at the same time, gives you a lot of crap. It gives you a lot of crap, and you can start to see maybe this is the downfall of the lightspeed model. The, 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 the point where the lightspeed models kind of started to go downwards in trajectory. I know it's the first one, but like, you know, that's where they're kind of headed right now with the Jedi Allies lightspeed model. Whatever you think about it, it is objectively uh, the worst lightspeed model on the list. I'm just going to jump to it. It's objectively the worst one, but not that there's, not that it's useless. Here, I'll put it in E. Not that it's useless, but it is objectively the worst one. Um, the raddest one is. I mean, there's a lot of good things about it. You get, I think you get like L3 in it. Obviously, I know you get like Karth, you get Evan Hawk. There's a lot of useful things in it. Obviously, you need it for Ray, which obviously we have the Ray stuff here. So obviously it's useful, but is it insane to the degree of the other light speed bundles? I don't know if it is. I don't know if it's on par. Again, it makes sense why it's in the game, but we're comparing it to the other light speed bundles. Is it as exciting? Is the price as worth it? Is you get you feel like you get the value out of it? There's a lot of crap in it, but there's also a lot of really really good things in it. And obviously, the majority of it is pretty decent. So, in terms of this tier list, I think I'm gonna leave it at D for now. But maybe we move it to C. I know that this is a good lightspeed model, and we need it obviously. But in terms of this grand picture here, I think it might sit at D for now. Next up, we have the JTR Lightspeed model. And this one is not great either. <laughs> this one is on par, or it's like right here with, in terms of value that you get out of it. Because the JTR bundle, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm pretty sure I did research on this before. If I'm remembering correctly, you get four characters. It was Vet Han, I think Vet Chewy, Scavenger Ray, and Finn. I'm pretty sure that was it. Now, you need it to get JTR. If you're going to go for Ray, you need JTR. And to make a Lightspeed Bundle for JTR so you can get Ray makes sense. But do I want to buy it? And would, does it... Well, yes, do I want to buy it? Yes. Does it, In the grand scheme of things, does it... Is it amazing value compared to everything else you get? It's kind of teetering in here. It's kind of teetering in here. Radis is in between here. JTR is in between here. Um, I, I think I'm going to leave it there for now and we'll just... Yeah, I'm going to leave it there for now and we'll see what happens. But I think that's a, a decent spot for it for now. Uh, Galactic Legends Ray, I mean, this is like, it, it's, it's just objectively amazing. It's like, it, it's so many resistance characters all, all together. Relic 5, so basically almost the entire faction of Relic 5 resistance characters. That's an insane value. And it's an insane deal. And I'm so happy that they did this. Um, I do think in the grand, I think I will put the BB-8 bundle ahead of Ray bundle. And probably in that same vein, put the SLK one above that. Because, I mean, it's just such insane value that you get out of the BB-8 and for SLK value. Because, I mean, you just get the entire faction. Um, but Ray is still amazing. You don't get the entire faction. So have to go and chase a few things. And I know you have to do that for Kylo as well. But I think the, the, the Relic 5 full first order versus the Resistance minus like a few characters because there's more legendaries in there. There's more legendaries in the resistance faction than there is in the uh first order faction. So obviously it makes sense that, that that's the thing, but that's kind of just how I think it lands in comparison to everything else here. Next up we're gonna talk about BAM. I think BAM is the most underrated bundle in this game. Now I think a lot of people would put it in C or B. I'm between B or A. I think I might leave it at B for now. We'll see. But I mean, the BAM bundle is like genuinely one of the best bundles I, I, uh, when it comes to cheap but high value things in there. Uh, it's great for your executor. Um, you get some really, really good bounty hunters. Grief Karga and the Mandalorian are S tier end game bounty hunters you use throughout the whole game. It's amazing. I'm really glad that uh, CG's also made them really easy to farm as well. And not only just that, but you get Queel, which is an amazing thing for your Dash Rendar team, which you get from uh, the Starkiller bundle. Scoundrel lineup, Queel really, really, really fits in there very well. 
Kara Noon goes on Rebel Fighters um, very nicely. And what else? Was there a fifth person in that? IG. Yeah, IG. Another solid addition to the uh, Dash team. So, you're getting a lot of good things here. And Bam himself can go on a Dash team as well. Not only just an executor requirement, not only just needed for the ship, which, I mean, obviously you also need for the executor, but you know what I'm saying. There's a lot of benefit to be had here. And I'm kind of, honestly... I'm putting it in an A tier because while the the they have similar characters and similar relic levels and all that stuff, the price for the Mando bundle is much better. Now, obviously, it's not as annoying of a journey. It's not that out of the way. I understand all that stuff. You get good characters out of it. Not that you don't get good characters on the Starkiller bundle, but I think the thing that pushes it to A tier is the price because they're very similar if you look at them at face value. But you get into the nuances, Starkiller is more valuable. But then they make the BAM bundle cheaper, so the value kind of evens out there. Because it's cheaper, but they're similar. So I really do like that about it. I think this is genuinely an insanely good bundle. You get so many good things out of it, especially if you bought the Starkiller bundle. You get a lot of good things out of this. This is a really great uh, building block for your account. So we're going to go with that. Uh, now, the finalizer bundle. Uh, this is an interesting bundle for me. I'm thinking B or C tier. Now, I'm thinking B or C tier because you get the bare necessities to unlock the finalizer. That's what the lightspeed bundles are for, and obviously that makes sense. We've talked about this a little bit with the ray bundle. But you still got to do a lot of farming outside of the finalizer to make the finalizer fleet amazing. I am still farming finalizer ships, and I've gotten SLKR like four or five months ago at this point. Like, I think it's been four months. I've had SLKR for a while on my account now, and I'm still going back and farming the other ships. I'm farming the Echelon and the Dagger still. It, it, it's a really good bundle, but the key ship you need for the fleet outside of the event is not in the bundle, which is annoying. But it makes sense. Again, I understand why they did that. No complaints there. I understand. Hey, that gives you some more time for us to farm things. Obviously, the game is about farming, so I understand that. But when you're objectively looking at, at Lightspeed Bundles that give you the entire package up front versus a pack that gets you to the character and then kind of just leaves you with another six months of farming. And again, it is a ship. Now, I under, again, I understand... You can also say that about the Ray Bundle, you can say that about the Star Killer Bundle, you can say that about the Bam Bundle, I understand that. The difference is, is that with the Star Killer Bundle, you need to farm outside of the Lightspeed Bundle, you need to farm Palpatine, you need to farm Mara Jade, and another, some, a few other characters, obviously Jedi, Ufu, whatever. The thing is, is with that, is if you buy the other Lightspeed Bundles, you will only really have to farm Mara Jade extra. Because you get J JTR, which is the Jedi tank, and then there's the Ufu. Who's a good Ufu that they put on that team? I know, obviously, Visus Mar. No, wait, it's J no, JTR is the Ufu, and then they put Old Ben, I think. I could be wrong there. Uh, and then, obviously, you have to farm Palpatine for Estel KR. So if you do that anyways, you still... Only, the only thing you really need to farm out the side of that is Mara Jade. Now, obviously, with the Galactic Legends, it's a little bit different. You have to go for a few other legendaries before you can get the Galactic Legends. I feel like, personally, that's a little bit different than a ship. I think, personally, that's different than a ship. So, when you look at it that way, I think the Finalizer Bundle is good, not insane. It's great. Again, to reiterate, all of these bundles are S-tier bundles in Galaxy of Heroes, but we're comparing them against each other. I feel like this is B-tier. Um, and I'm open to people disagreeing with that. I think there is a world where a lot of people disagree with that, and that's okay with me. But sitting here right now, I feel like this is a good spot for it. Next up, we're going to do the Shadows of the Empire Lightspeed Bundle. This gives you a bunch of crappy Phoenix that you need, I think, for CLS and some uh, Galactic Ledger requirements, <clears throat> as well as you get the entire Phoenix team. Now, when we look at value in the game... Uh, I mean, this is pretty good value. It's pretty good value. I think this was, I correct. I think this was twenty five dollars. I could be wrong, but you get a lot of like decent stuff in there. Again, if you buy this bundle, there's another thing for your old Ben. Your old the old Ben is another thing for your Star Killer team. You also get the entire Phoenix faction, besides Crux, 
and Krex is just an insane character. Every single person should have Krex on their account. There is no excuse now. He is double drop farmable. He has either the entire team he's with came in a white speed bundle. You need Krex on your account. ASAP. With Krex, this becomes an amazing bundle. If they put Krex in this, this would be an S tier bundle. But you get a lot of extra rebel characters that aren't super amazing, like Farm Boy Luke. Like, okay, you get you need it early game which these are targeted towards early game but you need it like very early game to get it cls i'm pretty sure so outside of that it's not not insane i'm on uh, it, this is one of those it's kind of like where bam was where it's like in between b and a but i'm leaning a because of the phoenix and you get some extra stuff for the star killer bundle and I believe you also get some ships. Do you get some? You do get some ships in here as well, which is really good. I think you get um, wet wedge or well, you get wedge and bigs. I think you get their ships as well and a few other things. So maybe if it was, maybe if they didn't have the ships, I'd throw it in B tier. But with the ships, I mean, I think I'll put it. I'll let it sit at the bottom of A tier. I feel comfortable putting Bam above it, but I don't know where I land with it with uh, this thing yet. Now, the, um, another amazing thing that I think is solidifying this A spot for me, the bottom of A, is that you can get two legendaries with this. This is a Thrawn and Palpatine lights model. You get two legendaries with this one journey, which I think is really, really good. Uh, I am a huge fan of when they double dip like that. Uh, you use the Phoenix to get both, and that's amazing. And then, I mean, they could have just made this a Phoenix bundle, but they threw in some extra characters and ships with it. I, I do really appreciate about that about it. Um, some of these characters were pretty useful in the in the Endor raid. Obviously, we're approaching the end of that, but having them be useful for the Endor raid was really nice of CG as well. So, you know what? I think I am going to solidify that in the A tier spot as well. Now, we have the gas bundle. The gas bundle. And I kind of struggle with the gas bundle. Because to me, it's either A or S tier. But the issue I... Actually, I don't know if it is S tier. Maybe it's S or A or B tier. Maybe it's A or B tier. With like, hmm. Now, my reasoning behind this is because you get some ships to get the first tier unlocked. Cool. You get some characters. Well, you get some of the characters to do tier two. No. Yeah, it is tier two. Cool. But a lot of those characters aren't insane that are in this bundle. Now, you get a lot of some relic pilots and some ships and all that stuff. That's good, but nothing insane. That's like, this is really propelling me to buy this light speed model. And it is $50. I will say, if this was $20, this would my my opinion on this bundle would be much different. This is $50. Now, with the ships, you get the negotiator, which is kind of pushing it up right now when it comes to the first tier or two. Because you also need to get... Padme. And I would have really liked to see this bundle be Relic 5 characters instead of Relic 3 characters. Because Relic 5 characters on GK and Shock T and all that stuff would have been really, really nice. It would have been really nice. Um, Save me a little bit of extra time having to upgrade those certain characters. And the Padme bundle is a little different. We'll talk about that in a second. But when it comes to the characters in here, good, not amazing. And you also, I believe, get some droids in here as well. Relic 3 droids. Uh, Separatists, I should say. That the ones that you need for the gas event, obviously. Good, but the Padme bundle has them at Relic 5. Now, I understand you had to make those at Relic 3 so that there was an incentive to buy the Padme bundle for those that were planning on buying all of them. I was a sucker and have bought all of them except the Jedi Allies one. So I understand what the mindset behind that was. But at the same time... It's like, that's not, when there's a better bundle on shelf next to it, it's like, well, not not a better bundle on the shelf necessarily. It's just like for looking at the Separatists specifically, it's like, okay, it's right there, right? <laughs> it's right there. Now you get a few extra things with the Padme one, I believe, so it's a little different, but the gas bundle is good. Negotiator is doing some hard lifting right now. Negotiator, GK, 
and having shock t those three having those three in this bundle is really doing a lot of the heavy lifting i think for it for those of us who really really want gas and need an excuse to get it <laughs> me this was an insane thing to do and i'm very happy that we have it in terms of the other light speed bundles though it's not as exciting if you take away the the gas cover do you know what i mean so i think i'm thinking like there is probably a good spot for it. i think it's amazing but it's not like the best light speed one we've ever had the relic three is kind of an uh, sad it's a little disappointing the negotiator is amazing um they could have done a little bit more i almost i almost feel like they could have just combined the padme bundle with the gas bundle made it 60 dollars, and this would be an s tier bundle i think that's how i'm kind of like sitting on this right now um speaking of the padme bundle i mean this basically gives you a bunch of separatists and this gives you what every separatist except stap and general grievous and trench right i think it's those three stap grievous and trench i think you don't get from this bundle um I'm going to put it at like tied with gas. I feel like putting it above it doesn't make sense because negotiator is doing a lot of heavy lifting. Insane value. No, I'm going to put it underneath it. I'm going to put up gas above it because I mean, negotiator is doing some heavy lifting. That's so good for early game as well. And obviously, I mean, the Galactic Republic characters are so great on their own and you have to get Padme. So you have Padme with some Galactic Republic characters. So it is good. Like the, these two bundles paired together is an S tier combo. But individually, I feel like they're A tier. I don't know if that makes sense. I think that's where I'm at with this. The 3PO bundle is, um, it's fine. It's like fine. Now, I feel like the 3PO bundle was a thing that was always going to happen when we started talking about life speed bundles being a thing. We said, we, we knew that there was more life speed bundles coming and we said, okay, some likely light speed bundles are 3PO with the Ewoks. And it completely makes sense to have this in the game. I'm not at all upset by that. Um, I think the the thing is just like, do you want to buy it? That's like what it comes down to. It's like, do you want these Ewoks? You don't get Ewok Scout, which is weird. I think it's Ewok Scout. I'm pretty sure you don't get Ewok Scout and Nisa, which makes sense. But it's like, why leave out Ewok Scout? That doesn't make any sense. Like you could just throw it in there. There would be no reason not to i don't understand why they did that so maybe someone knows better than i do and why they excluded whatever ewok they excluded let me know in the comments if you know why but i have no idea why they did that so at least at the time of this recording so i think that the value for this bundle is there it saves you a lot of time and it saves you an annoying farm and resources that you would have to spend on ewoks which unless you're a gerbil not a lot of people want <laughs> <laughs> to spend that much on their Ewoks. So, is this an insane bundle that you want to buy? No. This feels like a bundle you should buy for, like, homework. This is like a homework bundle. That's what this feels like. It's like, the smart thing to do and makes sense to buy it is to buy it. But it's not as flashy, not as exciting. You get 3P out of it, which is a pretty decent character, especially if you're trying to build CLS and do the Jedi Master Luke pipeline, which in case you don't know what the Jedi Master Luke pipeline is, that's CLS, C3PO, Jedi Knight Luke, Jedi Master Luke, Jedi Knight Revan, and Big Cal. That is the Jedi Master Luke pipeline. Um, it's good for that, get you started on that path, but do you want to buy it? That's what it comes down to. Next up, we have the Knight Sister bundle. This is good. I, this is a good bundle. This is a, objectively a good bundle. And I think some people might disagree with me putting it in B tier. I do think... I'd probably put it there. I'd probably put it there. I think it's good. And I, I do... I, I'm glad I have it. The thing is, is with the Night Sisters, as I have been discovering in my recent GACs, is that you need to really invest into them for them to do their thing. Maybe really invest is like too heavy. I mean, like put Zetas on them, maybe adjust some relic levels. You need Marin as well, which completely makes sense why she's not in the bundle. Um, but they are, I'm pretty sure the relic five, which is good. I mean, this teeters on A. I feel like we need to have some more distinction. I feel like I'm putting everything in A tier though. So I don't want to like, I don't want to like put everything in A tier. And that just doesn't, you know, it doesn't, it's not fair. That's just not fair. I don't want to put everything in A tier. 
So my thing with this is that you need to put the Zetas on, obviously mods is the thing that we need for all of these, but to make this amazing, you really need Zetas, which you can also say for a few of these other bundles, but I just, I struggle to find like the line. You know what I mean? I struggled to find the line. I feel like I could, I could move this to B tier in the grand scheme of things. I feel like I could, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave these two A tier, but I feel like I could move this one to B tier as well because you get so much extra stuff in this, but it's a decent price, but you double up on legendaries, but you don't need that many, but it doesn't hurt to have that many characters. Hmm. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to switch them. I'm going to put the Knights, Knights Sister Bundle at the bottom of A tier, and I'm going to put the the Rise of the Empire, or whatever it is, the Shadows of the Empire Bundle in B tier. I'm going to switch them. I think the Shadows of the Empire Bundle is amazing, but you don't... They're the building blocks for a lot of better things. I can kind of argue that the the Shadows of the Empire Bundle is a similar one as the Phoenix, or not Phoenix, sorry, the C3PO Bundle, where it's like, these are a lot of good things in here, I should buy it, but maybe it feels more like homework to some people. I understand that. Again, if you combine this with some other bundles, you get a lot of good stuff out of it. I can see the argument for this not being as amazing as I originally put it, though. But the Night Sisters bundle basically gives you the entire faction. So I think if you look at it that way, I think A tier is good for Night Sisters, and I put that one on B tier now. Uh, last up, we get the Geonosians. I think the Geonosians are a B tier... Yeah. I think Relic Geos is a nice to have. It's like not needed. Because we have the Padme bundle now, right? So you can now you don't necessarily I guess if you're gonna buy a bundle to get Padme, you don't need Geos now. You can use the Padme bundle to get Padme, obviously. Geos Relic Geos is a nice to have. Obviously, if you're if it's relevant for your guild and you need it, then that's great. I'm glad that they've done that. But it's not like one I personally have been like super glad I invested in. I am glad I bought it, but it's not like I don't log into my GAC every day. I'm like, oh, thank God I bought that bundle. Like I do for the Shadows of the Empire bundle. Every time I log into my GAC and I see Shadows of the Empire, I see that my Phoenix team gets three holes. I'm like, let's go. Dude. <laughs> I'm glad I bought that bundle. You know what I mean? Because it saved me a lot of time, energy, whatever. Geo bundle, I'm getting basically the same holds I got as before when they were gear 12. So it's not like that huge of a distinction, but it's nice to have. It's a nice to have bundle. I think that's where I, I land on this. I think I'm happy with my ranking gear. I think that there is a lot of room, a lot of wiggle room. I think a lot of people are going to have a similar flow. I think people are going to have the Galactic Net Legends near the top. I think they're going to have uh, these few Resistance and Jedi Ally bundles near the top. I think the middle is going to get a little muddy, but I feel like everyone's going to have a similar... I think people are going to have a similar appearance. Like, I think everyone's going to kind of agree with me to some extent. Some people might some put more bundles in S tier. Some people might put more, more, more bundles in C tier. But I think this is kind of where I'm I'm landing on it. I, I'm, I lock in SLKR, BB-8, Bray. I think these are good where they are. Starkiller and Bam, I think those are good where they are. These three... These five right here... Gas, Padme, Night Sisters, Shadows of the Empire, and Finalizer. These five, I feel like I could go back and forth and move around all day, but I'm not going to sit here and do that in this video. I think I'm going to just leave them where they are. I could absolutely be okay moving Finalizer up to A tier, moving Night Sisters down to B tier, moving Padme down to B. I, I can move this around. I can move this around. But I think everything with Geos and below, I'm also happy with. So. Yeah, I think I'm going to leave it here. Now, again, I want to reiterate before we all get annoyed in the comment section. This is a subjective ranking. You guys can rank this. The link will probably be in the description. Check it out. And just make sure we're all civil about this because it's just an opinion. Uh, I have a farming guide for this if you're interested in checking out what's most important to prioritize and whatever. This isn't necessarily most important from like most important to least important. Well, it somewhat is, but... This is just an opinion based off of like the value and all that stuff. So let me know what you guys thought about this video. Drop a like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. This was a long one.